Hey guys, welcome back to the Arzin channel. So this PSP over here is actually 11 years old and used to belong to my sister back in 2008. She actually passed it on to me and this PSP has seen hell because of me because I dropped it a couple of times and yeah, the analog stick is loose. The battery just falls out. It has no battery cap, no friction at all. The charging port was actually loose so it was hard to charge. So I saw this thing laying around a while ago, gathering dust, and I thought to myself, I think I'm able to bring this thing back to its old glory. And I'm glad I did, because it's working perfectly now, it looks pristine. Of course, if some of you guys might have been following me, you know that I love my translucent and transparent plastic. I ordered this housing online from AliExpress, and it took like three weeks to arrive. After that I got to work, and it was really satisfying to see this thing part by part coming back to life. If you got a PSP laying around and you're thinking of fixing it, then this might encourage you to do so. If you already got a housing and you want to follow along, this might serve as a tutorial, but I'm not responsible for any damages that might occur to your PSP. The risk is yours. If this video helped you at all, consider liking and subscribing and all that good stuff. And with all that said, let's get working. So, of course, we have to start off by removing all the screws that hold the exterior of the console together. And don't forget that there are screws underneath the adhesive stickers inside the battery cavity, which you will need to remove to get the front of the case off. Now after you've done all that, you can pry off the front of the case. Taking off the case exposes the home bar, which will be able to pry off using your prying tool fairly easily. In my case, the ribbon cable was not attached and it just slided out. Now you can start prying off the front panel of the PSP, but make sure not to yank it off because the ribbon cables keep it attached to the motherboard of the PSP. Ribbon cables are very fragile and you need to be very careful when dealing with them. Now it's time to unlatch the FPC connectors. These can snap off easily, so you don't need to use any force. I sped up the process, but I can assure you that I was very cautious while doing so. To remove the memory card slot, we are going to remove this screw over here and the bracket that holds down the L button. Because underneath the L button, there is a contact pad which pretty much attached to the body of the PSP just like a sticker and holds the memory card slot in place. So of course we remove it just like how we remove stickers. And now let's unlatch the ribbon cable and there we go, it comes off easily. To remove the speaker of the PSP you can twist it to the left side and it will come off easily, don't pop it off just like how I did. Now let's unlatch the ribbon cable of the button contact pads and remove the connector of the charging port and Wi-Fi antenna. Now we're going to remove the ribbon cables of the UMD drive, the smaller green one and the wider orange one. After you've removed those, the motherboard pretty much comes loose. Let's remove the power slider and disconnect the ribbon cable. Let's unscrew the charging port and the bracket that holds down the right shoulder button. Let's remove the analog stick. The interesting heatsink and the audio jack. I forgot to remove this one earlier. Now, just like before, we can remove this one just like a sticker. 
but this time around we will remove this whole flexible button PCB. Now you don't want to tear the button PCB so you got to be careful while removing it. To remove the internals of the UMD drive, we have to remove the UMD drive door. To do this, you can pinch the arms that hold the UMD drive door to unlatch it. After that, you can remove this white thingy that holds down the spring. Prying off the UMD drive door isn't easy and you'll have to be careful doing this because it can break. Especially since that the case I'm using later on is a acrylic case which will break much faster than this ABS case. After that, the screws are exposed and we'll need to remove them. Removing the screws, you'll notice rubber washers underneath them. These are important. We'll transfer those to the new case. So keep them attached to the UMD drive. As you can see, two of the rubber washers stayed behind in the old case. I've transferred them over to the UMD drive later on. Let's remove the sticker to expose the Wi-Fi antenna. And let's pry the Wi-Fi antenna off, just like a sticker. After we've accomplished that, our old case is all naked and we can transfer our components over to the new case. This transparent case over here is made out of acrylic, which means it's less resilient than ABS plastic, which the old casing was made out of. If you're the type of person that drops his PSP on the floor a lot, it's not smart to get this type of case. Of course, while you're moving your components over to the new case, aka the acrylic case, you'll have to make sure not to snap off thinner pieces of acrylic in this case. Now, remember the two ribbon cables I was talking about last time that this UMD drive has? You'll have to be sure to route them through the front of the case to be able to attach them later on to your motherboard. Otherwise, you'll squish them and probably they'll be damaged for good. Now, be very careful while putting back the UMD drive door because acrylic, as I said, is weak and you'll be able to snap those two pieces of plastic off very easily. If you want to have a functional UMD drive door, you'll have to put back that spring like it was before. Now place back the cube shaped piece of plastic that keeps it in place. Reattach the UMD drive door arms that we've put in earlier. Now the UMD drive door should be fully functional. Stick the Wi-Fi antenna back in its place. Route the Wi-Fi antenna wire flush against the surface of the case. Now stick back the button PCB sticker. Make sure that the trigger button is reseated in its original spot. Let's move on and put back the audio jack. Don't forget the screws. For the rest, the assembly is pretty straightforward, so you just can follow along and you'll be fine. Now, I just want to say thank you for watching the video so far and following along. Please like and subscribe. I hope this video helps you out. I do YouTube more as a passion and a hobby, but if it turns into a job, that would be great as well. Any help achieving that would be very much appreciated. Now this part is pretty much for people who are assembling theirs at the moment, but if you want to see the results of this, feel free to skip ahead to this part of the video.
While putting back the motherboard, be sure to keep those UMD ribbon cables above the motherboard, not under it. After removing the screen protector, this is like the first time I've seen my PSP without any scratches. It looks as if it's new. And that feels really satisfying. Now let's put back those stickers. I mean, that's optional, but you know, I like to put them back. Now, moment of truth. Let's see if this thing turns on at all. And it does. Of course, we'll have to check all the buttons, the trigger buttons, the Wi-Fi, the sound, the brightness. But I've tested everything and everything works just fine. Actually, since this memory card is, is from 2008, it's pretty much corrupted, so a lot of the games and data is it's not working at all. I'll still make a backup of this, but, you know, it's a great feeling seeing this thing back after so many years in such a glorious state. I might be, I might be too happy with it, but, you know, this, this has a lot of meanings to me. This device is part of my past. And to me, it looks like a piece of history. So fixing this thing and restoring it is just, you know, refreshing. I might get hooked up on doing this. I mean, maybe I'll buy some other older devices that are broken and just, you know, pretty much restore them. If you want to see more of these type of videos, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, tell me what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one.